southern Ontario, Canada. Seemingly safe. Oh, yes, a lot of retired folks, some farm folks. And at least one twisted pervert. There have been a rash of break-ins here targeting single, vulnerable women. The thief has a creep factor that has terrified many people in the town of Belleville. Anne Marsan Cook is a victim, and what was taken from her is personal, very personal. You noticed that your sex toys and items were missing. Yes, just the sex toys. Anne freaked out and left her house. She was so scared, she actually stayed the night with her friend, Howard Gray. There was no way I was going to allow her to uh, stay overnight there when there was something obviously peculiar. Anne returned with Howard by her side the next morning. I followed her over for safety's sake, I guess. Terror rushed over her as she opened the drawer to her bedroom dresser. All my underwear gone, everything, you know, bras, uh, panties, everything was gone. But the thief did leave a chilling note taped to Ann's computer screen. He said, uh, uh, go ahead and phone the police. What do you think he would have done had you not left the house, had you stayed there? I think he would have killed me. Turns out Anne may be right. This was no ordinary panty bandit. Just 30 minutes north in the tiny town of Tweed, there are similar but far more violent and disturbing break-ins. They had separate investigations going on in the different communities. In Tweed, cops are investigating the savage sexual assaults of two women who also had their bras and panties stolen. But the attacker didn't stop there, taking something else truly terrifying pictures that he took while he's doing this the first police report is from a 21 year old woman she lived uh, alone she had a boyfriend and she had a young daughter but on this night her boyfriend is out of town and the woman is home with her newborn after putting her baby to bed she too falls asleep basically broke into the home while she was sleeping then suddenly, out of a deep slumber, the nightmare begins. The woman is awakened by a man standing in her bedroom. He quickly blindfolds her. He fondled her uh, in the extreme. He uh, tied her up and kept talking to her. He tells her to model for him. Then the attacker begins to humiliate her. Was taking pictures of her? According to the woman, with each pose and snap of the camera shutter, the intruder demands that she obey him or else. He constantly threatened her. She went through a, an absolutely horrendous ordeal. And every second that he was there, she thought she was going to die. And don't forget, the entire time this degrading photo shoot is going on, the woman's newborn baby is in the room next door. She also was begging him not to hurt her baby, so she had tremendous fear for the baby. Poor young mother. Exactly. Then, after hours of unimaginable terror... Finally, he left her. But not before taking hundreds of photos of his half-naked victim. Again, that occurred in Tweed, in an area where people think they're so safe. Um, but someone was out there. And about to do it again. Just 13 days later, a frantic 911 call comes in to police. It's from another Tweed resident. The woman caller is hysterical. She explains she's calling from her couch where she's still tied up and partially nude. The woman's name is Lori Massacott. Like the other victim, Lori is also sleeping when the assault begins. It's a violent wake-up call. He punched her in the face. And her account of what happened sounds eerily familiar. He stripped her and fondled her again like the first victim. And then what appears to be the intruder's signature move. He set up his cameras and took a great number of pictures. Still, Tweed investigators aren't sure the two incidents are related. They even speculate the possibility of a copycat situation. There was actually some doubt that Lori was actually a victim, whether she was creating her own situation and calling for attention. But when Lori files a complaint against police, they quickly change their tune and begin to take Lori's story more seriously. In fact, Lori gives the Ontario Provincial Police their first big lead in the case. Lori Mazicott uh, thought 
the voice that she was hearing of the man she could not see sounded very much like Larry Jones. Larry Jones, who is a longtime resident of Tweed, and he just happens to be Lori's neighbor. They uh, told me that, uh, that I may be a suspect for the two, uh, two assaults down the road. And I said, you gotta be kidding. Coming up, do police finally have the man? Police became more interested in him. But suddenly, there's another suspect, and he's the last guy cops ever thought they'd catch wearing ladies' underwear. Probably one of the most upstanding individuals you'd ever think of. Whether he believes it or not, Larry Jones is in deep trouble. He couldn't account for himself. And he could not account for where he was during all those different attacks. That's right, that's right. 